In this video, I'm going to show you how to mini-map on FL Studio and VoiceMeter, but I'm going to go in-depth on VoiceMeter because there's not that many videos out there for it. MIDI mapping. Now, first thing I'd recommend doing is checking if your MIDI is actually going through FL Studio. So things like the controllers that I have here on my piano. If you do have any of these, I would like to check on FL Studio MIDI settings and check if it's separate channels. That's really helpful if you're going to use voice meter. But as you can see here, my Impact L88, uh, that would probably be the piano keys and that would be it. And then this would probably be the controllers up here. So now that I've made sure that it's on with enable, you should do that too. You are going to go to whatever program you want to set up. I'm going to try and set up contact. Now, let's see, I want my resonance to actually be mapped to resonance. You're going to want to fiddle with this a little bit, and you will see in the corner here when I fiddle with it, it has this little question mark. That means it is recognizing that you are using a slider, but it has no idea what that is. So you're going to want to map it. Let's say I want to map it to this, which is reverb. I'm going to first mess with it, tap it a little bit, make sure you wiggle it just a little bit, then you're going to want to come over here to Tools, Last Tweaked, Link to Controller. Now this weird menu will pop up and you're like, what is this? All you have to do is mess with the slider and boom, now it's mapped. As you can see, the more I mess with this, it goes up and down. So I want my resonance to right here. You play something, you're like, turn it up. I've already mapped my soft and hard. Now that you've MIDI mapped on FL Studio, let's say you want to MIDI map on Voice Meter. Well, make sure that you have every other slot disconnected. So only my piano right now is hooked up to FL Studio and my MIDI mapping controls are not. You're gonna to want to go to voice meter, I have it open, and menu MIDI mapping. And select my second slot, which is already open. And I'm gonna give it a new name. Let's say new map one, new map one. Now that you've named it and you've had the right MIDI selection, you wanna make sure that it actually is working. So it is detecting an input and make sure you can still play. So I can still play my piano, I can still mess with this, and it still recognizes. Now that it still recognizes, you're going to want to obviously map. It's super easy. There's a learn button, and there's what it's actually using, so you can know for the future reference. Gain fader strip 1. That is going to correspond with these. This is gain fader strip 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, and that will be your max. 5 is your max. And I'm just going to focus on one for now, so I'm going to cover everything else up. One. I'm going to map the following. Gain fader strip one, I'm going to map to this. This one right here. Now that it's mapped, learn. It's learned. Mute strip one. It's learned. So now mute my mic, and I can control the volume of my mic with my MIDI map. Solo strip, I'd recommend on everything, just not turning it on. It'll make it so that that is the only input and only output. So only that can be heard. So just don't use that. Reverb, I'm gonna also use this, but I'm gonna do this as resonance and learn. So now I can turn on my reverb like this and then turn it off but I am also going to map, let's see, a, where is it? A gate. I'm going to map a gate. Gate is another thing that voice meter has where, let's say you have background audio. This would be perfect for you. Let's say you're talking to people, but you have a heavy, heavy fan in the background. I'm going to use an actual fan for an example. You can hear my fan. 
Well, I'm going to turn up the gain a little bit. After I click Unlearn, that background audio just disappears because my gain is up. And if I wait, my background audio goes away. I'm going to turn it up a little bit more to like 3.4. And you can still hear my voice, but whenever I speak and then stop, the background audio fades away. For me, I do not need this. I don't need it because I don't have background audio normally. Normally my audio usually sounds like this. Nothing. If you do have that, it, this is really good to be able to mess with, just to turn it up out of nowhere just to get rid of that background audio, that person slamming their car, or that person doing drugs in the back of the Costco bathroom. Now that I've mapped MIDI mapping one, I mean, now that you've mapped that, let's say you wanna map other things like your desktop audio. It will probably be six, seven, and eight. So six, I'm gonna map that to, let's see, six is gonna be mapped to this. Yep, this is six. So I've mapped this. I'm gonna remap it just in case. I'm gonna map it to this one. And then stop. Now let's check if it actually worked. Yep, it's working. You can see it right here. So let's put that back. So I'm gonna set this to my mute. Set this to nothing actually. So now I can mute my desktop audio and I can have it up and down, but I'm going to remap this to my third one, which would be right here, map, and then map. And then I'm gonna do each and every single one. So six, seven, let's see, seven will be this, this, and then eight, eight, and eight. Now I have everything mapped. So I can mess with my controls. Let's say I want my mic to be a little bit louder. Oh, my desktop audio is too loud. Let me turn that down. Oh, these people on Discord are being way too loud. Oh, these people on Discord are really annoying. I'm gonna mute them. Ah, oh, my piano is way too loud. I'm gonna turn that down. This is really handy for on the fly adjustment without having to touch anything. So one more mini map that I have for global use here would be the B1 and A1 outputs, which would be over here. So since voice meter potato has three separate inputs for things like this, desktop, piano, discord, and your mic, let's say you want to mute all audio. Someone walks in your room and you're like, shit, people are being loud. I don't want to hear them. Well, that'll be super easy because there is mapping for mute mute and gain sliders over here for your global things. So this is global audio right here. Let's say you have all of your things mapped through A1, which is your headset, and you do not want to hear anything anymore. You will click mute. I can't hear anything anymore, but you can because it's going through my mic. But if I clicked this, it would simulate what I just heard. You couldn't hear anything. That is a global mute. And I'm going to select that real quick. It will be virtual bus over here and virtual A1. So A1 and B1 is probably what you're using, which would be selected here. A1, 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 B1, B1. B1. You're going to want to first select mixer of BS1, gain, mute, EQ, mixer. It just repeats. You're going to want to click mute and select which button you want to mute. For me, I'm going to have my five track for mute. Then for my A1, I'm going to have four. A1 is right here, mute. And my gain will be here. Let's map this one. Now that I have these mapped, Everything is mapped to a separate thing. There. I'm going to want to click learn again so nothing is being changed. I have all of my maps here. Everything's mapped that I want to be mapped. 
click X. Make sure everything works before you click the save button. So let's say I'm talking. This is working. Reverb. Gate. Mute. It works. Then on to, I don't have anything mapped to my second one. I'd still try it out, make sure nothing is being mapped. Three. Nothing's being mapped. Four. Two things are being mapped. Uh-oh, that was a mistake. An intentional one, if you saw. Go to MIDI mapping. Make sure you're not using the same slider. It seems I am using the same slider. So I'm going to fix that. 16. Problem found, problem solved. Let's try that again. Four. Five. Looks like I mapped it correctly. Check the mute. It muted. It muted. Okay. Those work. Obviously, you have these mapped. I already tested them. I already tested the mutes. And these work still. Everything works. Cassette tape. Everything works. Everything works. Once you've tested that everything worked, you are golden. And now you will save. You're going to want to go to MIDI mapping again and save MIDI map. Make sure to name it. And I'd say save it to a separate file on your desktop. So go to desktop, new folder, and I don't know, let's name it MIDI map saves. If you're going to have multiple MIDI maps, you wouldn't want to do this, but it really doesn't matter. Okay. Let's name it MIDI map one. And sure enough on my desktop I'm pretty sure that will be there if I open up my desktop MIDI map saves here it is MIDI map one that will be how you load if it ever ever does not show up you will have to click load so now that you have it saved everything should work everything is fine and works obviously manual control will still be the best because you can control with your mouse and double click to reset but having these manual actual physical inputs is so nice if you don't have this window open if you were playing for someone live and you don't have the time to reach for your mouse my keyboard is up here my actual typing keyboard is up here which is very inconvenient if I need to press the Windows key to open something to tab out, which is why it's really nice to have these manual mapping, these physical buttons here. And that's about it. Thank you for watching. Again, I'd consider subscribing. I will post another video next week.